we are going to take a closer look at variables, their different types, and how operators can be used to manipulate them. Computers don't automatically remember things unless we tell them to do so. Any information that is important to your program that you want the computer to remember must be stored in something called a variable. A variable is like a named storage container for information. When you create a variable and assign it a value, the computer will remember it and you will be able to refer to it later on as needed in your program. Indeed, variables can be used to store just about anything, but most data can be categorized into what are called data types. Data types are like families of information that any particular piece of data can belong to. Data types are important because they define the possible values a variable can assume, as well as the operations that can be performed on it. For example, something that is a number needs to have a numeric value. It can't contain things like textual characters, just things we understand to be numbers. Likewise, there are operations that you can perform on numbers, like addition, subtraction, and so forth, that you can't do with textual information. You cannot subtract text from text, for example, but you can certainly subtract numbers from one another. A huge part of learning any programming language is understanding the data types it supports. Although each language is different in this respect, there are general classifications of data types that most languages share. Most languages distinguish between textual, numeric, and Boolean information. Textual information is like the information that you associate with a written work, like the Declaration of Independence whereas numeric information is what you might associate with the mathematical operations you perform in your math classes. The last general classification, Boolean, is a special one. Boolean information describes all the binary information that surrounds us each day. In reality, a lot of information can be classified in terms of whether it is true or false. For example, you are either tall enough to ride an amusement park ride or you are not. You are either passing all your classes or you are not. Any information that can be seen as truly binary, represented as true or false, is considered to be of the Boolean type. Most programming languages also support data types that are some sort of collection. Collections are exactly what they sound like. They are groups of like, related information, like a collection of video game memorabilia, for example. By using a collection, you have the ability to assign multiple values to a single variable. Each language supports its own set of collections. For example, many languages support a type of collection known as an array. You will often hear these constructs referred to as data structures. Creating variables using microbit blocks is simple. Simply go to the variables tray and click on make a variable. From there, you can change, or in other words, set the values of your variables using the provided set and change blocks. Once you create a variable, you will find that a variable block with its name has been created in the tray. This named variable block can be used as necessary in your program to obtain the variable's current value. The microbit not only supports the ability to create single value text, number, and Boolean variables, it also supports one collection type, the array. Using the arrays tray, you can create an array with as many common items as you like you can set and get the values of each item using the provided blocks. Let's take a look at some examples of the different types of variables you can create using microbit blocks. In the first example, you see a simple variable named name, which is assigned to the text yo mama. Remember, programmers refer to pieces of text as strings. In the second example, you see an example variable named count being assigned the number zero. And finally, you see an example of a Boolean variable named calibrated, which tracks a binary reality, whether the device's compass has been calibrated or not. Here's an example of a microbit array variable. This variable is an array named answers. This array is a collection of strings. Each is a possible answer, just one item of the larger group. There are going to be undoubtedly times when you want to change the value of a variable or perform a calculation in your code that you ultimately assign to a variable. You can perform simple mathematic calculations using what are called arithmetic operators. Using these operators, you are able to do simple math. Here's a quick look at some of the arithmetic operator blocks you can explore as you continue your microbit adventure. Know your lingo. 
so-called operators perform operations on one or more operands. Let's take a look at a specific example of arithmetic operators in action. Here are two examples which demonstrate how you can use these operators. In the first block of code, the subtraction operator is used to decrement the count variable. In the second block of code, the addition operator is used to increment the count variable. Using arithmetic operators is just that simple.